regular meeting and the first item of business is the roll call by the town clerk chairman lynch present councillor backer here councillor fritz here councillor mcginty here councillor moles here councillor roberts present councillor swift kayata here manager mcgovern here and the next item of business is the pledge of allegiance Under reports and correspondence, I just wanted to mention that Cape Elizabeth Police Officer Paul Gaspar was recently named Elder Service Officer of the Year by Maine Attorney General Steve Rowe. We're really proud of Officer Gaspar, his service to the town and particularly to the elderly in our community. And I'd just like to take a moment to read a little bit from uh, the award. Um, Gas officer Gaspar has served as the community liaison, liaison officer in Cape Elizabeth since 1996. He serves on the Elder Service Officer Steering Committee through the Attorney General's Office and he has helped coordinate two statewide trainings for other Elder Service Officers. The Elder Service, Service Officer of the Year is awarded annually by the Attorney General to a law enforcement officer who performs exemplary work with seniors in the prevention of fraud, financial exploitation, and abuse. Attorney General Rowe selected Officer Gaspar for his leadership in the community in creating the Citizens Police Academy, which held its first graduation earlier this year. And we want to, again, congratulate Officer Gaspar. We're proud of uh, the work that he's done and very grateful to his service to the community. Is there any other reports or correspondence? Uh, Councilor McGinty? Um, I have two things. Uh, one of our local firefighters, Adam Salve from Engine 2, has spent the last two weeks in Montana fighting forest fires. Um, he'll be back tomorrow, hopefully safe and sound. Um, he's a trained forestry firefighter certified in the state of Maine. He went with a contingent of Maine firefighters to go there for two weeks and he's been uh, doing a share of battling those uh, large forest fires out in Montana. Also, uh, a couple weeks ago, we, sell, we uh, Evelyn and Jim Cox celebrated their 45th wedding anniversary. Um, they had a rather, the family had a rather nice party over at their house for them. And of course, uh, Evelyn's the captain of the rescue squad, and Jim's a longtime driver. And so I'd like to report those. Councilor Fritz. Yes, I um, just want to announce that the Appointments Committee is going to be considering applications for boards and commissions uh, that begin their terms uh, the first of the year. Um, and the next courier will list the boards and commissions that have positions that need to be filled. And um, so look there to see if you're interested in any of those committees. Um, and the deadline for application is October 31st and you can apply by coming to the town hall and getting an application or you can apply online at the CAPE website which is capeelizabeth.com. So we look forward to, to having some good applications this year. Thank you, Councillor Fritz. And any, any other reports or correspondence? Okay. Uh, time for the town manager's report. Uh, thank you, Madam Chairman. The main thing I wanted to remind everyone is that next week, uh, Wednesday, September 17th. 17th, I should remember that date, uh, the town hall and the library will be closed the entire day. During the morning, we're going to be doing uh, different employee trainings, the mandated training, uh, just an update on all sorts of issues. And during the afternoon, we're having our employee appreciation annual luncheon for the first part of the afternoon. and then. If all goes well, uh, we'll all have a couple extra hours off. Uh, but that's the, the usual routine on the employee recognition luncheon is that we do close at noon, but because we've discovered uh, difficulty trying to undertake all of this uh, mandated training that we have as well as to do other of those types of things, uh, those two places are going to be closed uh, all day. 
Uh, secondly, I did want to congratulate our uh, children's librarian, uh, formerly known as Rachel Quank, uh, now known as uh, Rachel Davis, uh, on her uh, very recent marriage. I know everyone wishes Rachel well. Uh, she, she had a great summer, not only uh, getting married, but also with the summer reading program. I think there were 480 students who were actually uh, young people who were actually registered uh, for the summer reading program this summer. Uh, just an amazing number. Uh, there were over 1,100 young individual registrations for community services program this summer. Uh, 1,600 registrations, but 11, over 1,100 individuals were registered in those programs. And I think, you know, if you look at between community services and, and uh, the library, there's certainly an awful lot for folks to do uh, throughout the year. It's just not the September to June 20th. And, really want to praise the work of all the people at the library and all of those who staff community services of all ages uh, for all of their excellent work in, uh, in working with those young folks. Uh, also uh, completed a number of other projects this summer. Uh, most notably, we've had a lot of comments on the facilities uh, staff and the work they've done in repainting the front of the middle school. Uh, quite, a, quite an improvement over, over what we saw there in the past. Uh, the Public Works Department, uh, working with Dearborn Construction and others, completed a sewer rehab uh, project uh, down in the Mountain View Park area. Uh, also, the, re the long-awaited reconstruction of, uh, of Cottage Farms Road. Uh, that's a, a vast improvement over what that looked like uh, a short time ago. Uh, so all in all, it was a busy summer, and I'm really pleased. Uh, I could go on and on without putting anything down the website. Uh, if you looked at the, the assessments now, are, are all there. That's vastly improved. Uh, we should be cutting down uh, quite a bit uh, on phone calls. And I could go into all the other departments as well, but a lot to accomplish. And I really appreciate everyone's cooperative efforts in uh, moving those things forward. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the minutes of the meeting. Um, of August 11th, 2003. We have a motion. I move they be approved. Second. All in favor? I will abstain since I was absent from last month's meeting. Um, opposed? No. So six in favor, one abstention. And the next item on our agenda is citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. If anyone is here who would like to discuss anything with the council that is not on our agenda, which we'll be discussing later, uh, please feel free to approach the podium. Okay. Seeing none, we'll move to the rest of our agenda. Um, the first item is item 320304, which was the tabled amendment to the revised official code of ordinances regarding council pay. I would move the remo that we remove the item from the table. Is there a second? Second that. All, all in favor? All opposed? 7-0. Okay. Is there another motion? I would also move that we, uh, in accordance with Chapter 1, Article 2, the revised official code be amended to read uh, Section 1-2-3, Council Pay, the annual compensation of the town council will be th shall be $350, subject to, an, subject to an appropriation in the annual budget. Is there a second? Second. Second. Is there any discussion? Councilor Backer. I realize that nobody is uh, particularly interested in hearing this issue debated, and that's not my intent. And I know that it was uh, discussed at some length at last month's meeting, and I apologize for missing that. Um, and there was a time that um, when this first was proposed that I was inclined to vote in favor of it. But I simply want to voice um, the fact that, that I have reconsidered, which I always reserve the right to do. And after reconsidering and talking with people, um, I have decided to vote against it simply because the amount that we're talking about is so small. I mean, there was initially a time when I thought that it might make a difference to somebody as to whether they'd be willing to run for council if they couldn't afford to run if there was no pay. 
that $350 is so nominal that I can't imagine that it will ever make a difference in anybody's decision whether to volunteer to run for council or not. Um, and it seems to me that we have an obligation to take responsibility for leading the way and committing to reducing the budget wherever possible. And I realize this is a tiny line item in the overall budget, one ten thousandth of the overall town budget on an annual basis. Um, but I think that every little bit helps, and I think that um, town councilors should lead the way in committing to volunteer their time as councilors, as do school board members, and all other volunteers who serve on behalf of the town in various committees and positions. And for that reason, I'll vote against it. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Three. One, two, three, four, five. Opposed? Two. Okay. The next item on the agenda is consideration of the approval of a proposed concession stand for Playstead Field. Mr. McGovern, if you would like yes. to just take a moment. Very brief. This was discussed at a, a recent uh, Town Council workshop. The Cape Elizabeth Little League is in a position to fund this building as the result of a gift from the Harris Playstead Trust. Uh, Harris Playstead, for those that don't know, is the person for whom the field is named but uh, he's also the founder of Little League, not only in Cape Elizabeth, but also in the state of Maine. Uh, the council reviewed the uh, proposed concession stand at a, at a recent workshop, provided some suggestions. Uh, those have been communicated uh, already informally to the planning board at a workshop, and tonight's action would confirm uh, the authorization of the town council uh, for the town to file an application with the planning board for site plan approval of the proposed concession stand slash storage building. Do I have a motion? I'd like to make a motion that we approve the moving of the uh, concession stand to the planning board. Second. Okay, do we want to um, just define that a little more as presented perhaps yeah. to us in our workshop? I would like to make a motion to approve the design as presented to us at the August 21st workshop for the concession stand for Playstead Field. Second still stands. Okay. Any discussion of this item? Councilor Roberts? I would just like to thank uh, Mr. Jeff Bump, who's in the audience, for all his work and efforts on this. I know he's put a lot of time in for the Little League, both at this field and the other field, and uh, I believe he's leaving after this year. I know he'll be so sorely missed. So, Jeff, thank you. Any further discussion? Am I, am I understanding that you're proposing the council approve it rather than have the approval have, have what was submitted to us go to the planning board for approval? Exactly. As is written in the form to approve to submit it to the planning board as presented to us. Right. Okay. I'd just like to comment that I, I think that the design um, that was submitted was really very attractive and would fit into the, um, the neighborhood uh, very well. And um, um, so I, I uh, appreciate the offer of the, the building. Any further discussion? All in favor? Just one comment, maybe very end. Could somebody, read, um, for, just for the public, mention where the money came from? We did. Uh, build this. We, did I miss that? Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. All in favor? Seven. In favor? Okay. And the next <laughs> item is item 440304. It is consideration of a recommendation from the planning board that the proposed Fort Williams master plan be approved. And um, we have received um, the Fort Williams Master Plan. We received it last month. And I think that um, it is recommended here that a public hearing be set for us. 
October 15th so that the public can provide comments on that plan to us. So, Councilor Swift Teata. I move that um, we accept the report of the planning board and set a public hearing on the adoption of the plan for Wednesday, October 15th, 2003 at 7.30 here in Cape Elizabeth Town Hall. Second. 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 All in favor? Any further discussion? All in favor? Seven. In favor? Next item, item 450304, consideration of a report from the planning board recommending various mm -hmm. amendments to the town ordinances. You have in your package, to, uh, which you received last week, a big, thick pile of proposed amendments, and it's been recommended by the, um, but it's been recommended that we refer this to the ordinance committee. And generally, I think the procedure is the ordinance committee will look at it, report back to the council, at which point we can hold a public hearing. Just one, one quick thing. It, it, the notes on the agenda should should read, it is recommended that either the report or their, T-H-E-I-R. <laughs> that the report. Yeah. My error. Uh, uh, I can have I know better. motion. <laughs> so moved. And a second. second. Any discussion? Councillor Fritz. Um, this is a quite a package of changes to various ordinances. And some of them, I think, are pretty simple and easily explained. But we have not really talked about these policies ourselves in a workshop or heard from the planning board or the code enforcement officer, the reasoning behind the changes. And I'm just thinking that the process might be better if we had that sort of discussion and then it went in a workshop format and then it went to the ordinance committee. And they might go at different rates. I mean, some of them might be very simple and go immediately others we might want to really study the implications of the policy i just i'd like to suggest that this go to the ordinance committee the ordinance committee can review the package in total and then we can have a workshop on whatever comes out of the ordinance committee because we send all of these things that's right i just like there's there's no uh, reason that these have to go in lockstep with each other if we find a couple that we find very easy and we all agree that there's no you know significant impact or technical changes we can move those right out of committee right away and the ones that are more difficult i mean the last one here dealing with the perkins case you know is more of a legal and there's legal issues real deep legal issues involved um, that may take some more time to review um, so i think you know give the ordinance committee first crack at this and then uh, you know it's all going to come back to the full council anyway I agree with Councilor McGinty that process-wise, I think it would be um, more effective to just send it to the Ordinance Committee, which can then flag the stuff that may need more discussion or debate, or there may be any controversy. I, I don't know of any particular controversial issues, but you're right. Some of them were correcting typographical mm -hmm. errors, and some of them were pretty simple, and I think Ordinance can just sort of put those right through the process and, and then flag the ones that we may need more substantive discussion on. Any, I just wanted to mention something procedurally. Every time we change ordinances, it's a major undertaking in terms of printing, mm -hmm. in terms of uh, review, public advertising, hearing, in terms of the legal community once in the development community knowing which ordinance is in place at any given point so when it's litigated we're making sure we're referring to the same ordinance i would strongly encourage the council as much as possible to amend the zoning ordinance only once a year in the subdivision ordinance only once a year and that you know that it it really eases things in terms of everyone dealing with the ordinance and can save the town every time we print that ordinance uh it's about 14 dollars a copy now and it, it does add up over time with all the gratis copies we need to give 
uh, to the different boards and councils and others who are looking at review copies, uh, as well as uh, causing confusion as to which one. Yeah, just to say, um, I, um, I agree with the manager, and I, I, when I proposed the ordinance committee sending some of them through, I mean sort of send them through to a certain point, and then when everything's approved, it's all approved and changed at one point in the process. But some of them just won't need as much elapsed time to consider as some of the others. So, But I agree, we don't want to be changing them piecemeal. It'll be too complex. And that was my intent also when I said that. And if I, I mean, they could also be clumped into, say, we'd, we'd print the whole zone ordinance as one block. Um, I guess the issue I'm most concerned about is the sewer ordinance. That's something that's separate. That, that isn't a printing issue. And I think there are many more policy implications that we should discuss as a council beforehand. I mean, there are lots of implications in terms of how fast we grow, whether it fits the comprehensive plan, whether we so overload our sewer system that we need to have capital expenses. You know, I think there are some major issues surrounding the sewer ordinance and what is being proposed that we should discuss as a conflict first. The other one, I would say, goes to the ordinance, er, the ordinance committee. Councilor Mo. I just wanted to mention that I agree with Councillor Fritz that there are quite a few very interesting changes in this document. I'm looking forward to getting it back from the Ordinance Committee um, and, and, you know, as uh, Councillor McGinty and Councillor uh, Swift Chaotic said, uh, we should move this forward to them, get their input. Uh, there's one particular provision talking about affordable housing where they change the timing on with a house that's in the affordable housing program doesn't sell in 24 months, it can be rever reverted back to a standard sale and the rewriting has it at 120 days. Well, that's obviously not acceptable. That's much too short a time frame. So we're, we're gonna need to give our input to the, the ordinance committee, uh, but we should just move this forward to them to see what, what's legal and what isn't. Councilor Backer. As the uh, chair of the ordinance committee that will be receiving this packet, <laughs> um, it, it, it sounds like it might be helpful if it's not out of line to do so to request that we have someone from the planning board attend the ordinance committee meeting to help explain the policy decisions behind some of the ones that are not quite obvious, not technical. Is that appropriate? The town planner is the staff person for that committee. No, okay. Be there anyway. all right. I think it's always appropriate to call in the experts yeah. that you need. Uh, and if Maureen is the only person who needs to be there for those policy explanations, that's fine. And, and I, I guess my point is when, when the Ordinance Committee reports back to the Council, we'll report back on the policy decisions behind some of these yeah. so that it's clear. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think the long and short of it is there will still be ample time for the council after the ordinance committee goes through it to workshop this more substantive changes so that the council fully understands or so that all of the council fully understands the implications of the substantive changes um, and and or have a public hearing so that we have all the information we need to, uh, any further might discussion just, just add one other thing in our policy goal for the council, we have um, one that says we should meet with the planning board, zoning board, to discuss issues. This seems to be one of the big things that they're, they're recommending a whole package. It seems an appropriate time to meet with them and hear what their reasoning is. Um, so that the, since the ordinance committee is only three people of the council, um, to hear the whole council's thoughts at least before you go to work. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion? Two, three, four, five, six. Opposed? One opposed.
Okay, item 46.03.04 is consideration of the recommendation from the town clerk to reappoint Marion Kohlhauser as chairwoman of chair, chairman, sorry, of the Voter Registration Appeals Board for a new four-year term due to expire on September 29, 2007. And Second. If I might correct the spelling, H-O-L-F, the cold cover. Oh, my, my mistake again. Okay, oh. cold cover. Oh, okay. in, in the memo, it's spelled that way. So moved. Is there a second? Seconded. All in, any discussion? Councilor McGinsey. I just want to make a comment that I, I found it interesting that this board has never met I guess maybe that's a tribute to the voter registrars, what people actually do the registering of voters, that apparently they've never, you know, aired so bad that somebody's had to appeal their registration, so. Councilman Moe. I just wanted to mention that uh, prior to tonight's meeting, after seeing this on the agenda, uh, I spoke with Henry Adams, uh, who was the nominee from the Republican Committee, and he spoke very highly of Marion Holzhauser and uh, was very happy to have her on that committee. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? Seven in favor? None opposed. Item 470304 is consideration of authorization of a stormwater management plan to be submitted to the Maine Department of Environmental Protection this plan was in your package, and um, Mr. McGovern, do you want to provide any further just very information? Yes, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, just very briefly, uh, this began about a year ago. Councillor Roberts, Councillor McGinty, uh, I think that was it, uh, attended a wonderful meeting at Fort City Hall, at, at which this was uh, all explained. It was actually a very painful meeting. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and fortunately, Bob Malley's gone to about 25 meetings now, <laughs> yeah. uh, the director of public works as well as Steve Harding. And anyway, this, this involves a federal mandate to uh, provide uh, public educational outreach and eventual action on ensuring the, the best uh, possible practices in dealing with stormwater. Uh, if you look at everything for Bob that's come up here in the plan, at this point, it's, it's mainly education, it's mainly uh, creating databases of, of uh, mapping of, uh, wa of water quality, you know, really important data that will be uh, important baseline data, particularly as we protect these resources. Uh, one of the council called me today and said, Michael, do you know how much this is going to cost? And, you know, fortunately, what, what has been this particular aspect uh, is not that expensive. The council did provide appropriations. Uh, in the, uh, the current budget of $15,000 to begin to address some of these issues as well as to pay for some of the uh, costs up to this point. Uh, in the long run, we don't know what it might cost because we don't know exactly what the state uh, may re be requiring as part of the federal mandate on uh, dealing with uh, stormwater uh, quality. So, you know, it's, it's a good plan. I, I really appreciate all of the efforts uh, that Bob Nally has uh, put into uh, preparing uh, this document, and uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions if you have any. Any questions for the town manager or discussion? Councilor Backer? Uh, Mike, this document has been reviewed by the town engineer? Yes, he, he was involved in a lot of the meetings and discussions with Bob. I looked through this. It's not something that is very comprehensible unless you are familiar with storm water issues, it's a document that might as well be written in Greek. So I am going to defer to um, the town engineer um, and our public work director to ensure that this was prepared as it should be. David, now you know how um, Jack and I felt going to that meeting seeing there with those public work directors and engineers and it was painful. That's a good characterization. I can well trying understand. Trying to listen to them and, and that stuff, <laughs> you know, go like that. But um, I think it's an excellent report and it's a, a, like Mike said, it's just a start, I believe, in this area. So. Councilor Roberts. Thank you. I would like to at least add that uh, we have money in there, but 
a this is going to be an extremely expensive process for a number of towns and cities, and it's another one. Most of it will be an unfunded mandate from the federal government and the state government again. And there's not much we can do about it. Most of it's probably needed, but the timing of this could be driven by somebody above us forcing the cost down on us, and that's unfortunate, but here we are again. Any further discussion? One quick point, very quick. The cost in last year's budget for this process alone was $17,000. So you can see it is a mandate that, that is costing uh, some amount. All in favor of the motion? <coughs> we, I thought we had a motion. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm in favor of it anyway. <laughs> I move that we authorize um, filing this plan as laid out here with the new CEC. Second. Second. Okay, all in favor, having had our discussion. <laughs> Four, five, six, seven in favor. And item 480304 is consideration of a recommendation from the Fort Williams Advisory Commission to permit a cancer survivorship day at Fort Williams Park on June 13, 2004. And in your packet is a letter from Terry Pickett of Maine Medical Center, Betsy St. Germain of Maine Medical Center, and Linda Sheminsky of the Cancer Community Center um, describing the event that they're hoping to hold um, at Fort Williams celebrating the surviving of cancer by people. So it sounds like a wonderful event. And they are here, I'm told. If there are any questions? I'll move approval of that. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in well, I'd just like to say that if there was ever a reason to celebrate anything, that surviving cancer is a great cause to celebrate. And um, I can't think of any more worthy celebration to have at the fort. Any further discussion? Not unless the ladies would like to say something. Well, let's move. All in favor? <laughs> Seven zero in favor, and uh, I, I know we all agree with Councillor Backer and wish you a very successful event. Okay, um, we have another item that is not on your agenda, but um, is added at the last minute, and that is we need to elect a voting delegate to the Maine Municipal Association Convention. So from among those who are here, <coughs> Um, and I don't know who is planning to attend both days, but if there is a member planning to attend both days. Can, I, can you do it because, I mean, I, being on the executive committee, can you? If I could just interject, I'm on the executive committee of MMA, so I will be there all three days, so I know I'll be there. Uh, and I'd be happy to do it unless someone else has a burning desire. So. Well, do we have a nomination? <laughs> I move that Ann Swift be out of the voting delegate. So I can make. Any discussion? We're glad you're willing to do it. Thank you. All in favor? Six, seven, zero. And now it is that time in the agenda. Later. Um, that time in the agenda, if anyone is here who would like to address the council, who didn't um, feel the need to address the council earlier, um, now's your opportunity. And it's from the governor. While the cameras were still running, I thought I might update the council on the bid proposal results for next door. Mm -hmm. do that? Sure. In general terms. I, think it's, it's, I think everyone's aware, uh, maybe not everyone, but. Uh, there's been a number of articles in the newspapers. There was, there's been a process of, uh, we have this lot immediately to the uh, north of the town hall, uh, originally a shell service station for those that have been around town for a while, but later on in Irving and then a welding shop. Anyway, the town council authorized the process where that we would test the water to see if there's interest in purchasing the property. Uh, we had nine proposals went out uh, all together between the ad and the newspaper, and ones that we sent out to uh, folks who uh, had indicated interest. 
uh, this afternoon at 3 o'clock, uh, we received three sealed proposals uh, from folks in, interested in purchasing the property from the town of Cape Elizabeth. Two of the proposals uh, were for $185,000, and one of the proposals was for $207,000. Uh, all of the proposals uh, provide for mixed commercial slash retail slash residential use. Uh, the town council will be holding a brief workshop following this meeting. It'll be a public workshop at which there'll be a discussion as to what process to go from this point on, uh, how you wish to meet with, with those three bidders, when you plan to do it, discussing dates and further refining the process. Uh, two of them also provided sketches of what a potential building may look like, and those are available for the public to see, as well as uh, copies of the bids. The third bidder provided an example of a building that he recently did in South Portland uh, that he said would be uh, representative of the type of structure he'd, in he'd be interested in developing on this lot. Uh, all of the bidders have strong Cape Elizabeth ties. Uh, all of the bidders, in fact, live in Cape Elizabeth, although some of them, actually, the bids are in the name of a, of a limited liability corporation, but all the, the, the folks that are the, the folks, principals in those LLCs uh, all have Cape Elizabeth uh, backgrounds. So I, I just wanted to, you know, publicly disclose those bids. We also, one of the issues we, we will be discussing in the, uh, in the workshop that follows is that one bid came in at 3.30. The bids proposal said that all bids had to be in no later than 3 p.m. And that bid is currently in the office of the town clerk and remains unopened. Uh, so I, I wanted to make, to make you aware of that, and, uh, that that will be a discussion as we go. Okay, so um, the next scheduled meeting of the council is a workshop meeting on Thursday, September 18th at 7.30. At that meeting, we will discuss access to Great Pond. We'll also discuss conservation land off of Sawyer Road, the La Rea, is that how you say that? La Rea, uh, conservation land. And we will be discussing the proposed alewife ordinance. Um, in regard to Mike's previous discussion, anyone who is interested uh, should keep in mind that we will be posting any further workshops that we have, um, and they may or may not be an executive session on the purchase of the land. So um, people can keep an eye on what's posted in terms of uh, further meetings. So at this point, I would entertain a motion to adjourn, and then we will take a few minute break, three or four minutes, and then go into workshop. And that workshop is not an executive session, at least at this point, we're planning only to discuss the process. I motion we adjourn. Second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Thank you.